Okay guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to discuss an idea. More, more like uh, something that we need to understand just to feel more comfortable solving problems. And uh, this idea relating to how can you basically turn a, a difficult problem into an easier one. But let me start by asking you this. If I gave you a choice of solving two beams, which one would you choose? Let me show you. Which beam is easier to solve, in your own opinion? The one on the left or the one on the right? By asking or by using the word easier, basically, I mean just getting the reaction at support A and B. I would say that the majority of you will go with the beam on the right because it looks simpler, basically. Next, what about these two? Again, most of you will pick the one on the right. But actually, what we can do is transfer whatever we have on the left to the one on the right. It doesn't really matter which one you start with, how difficult your beam looks like, you can always simplify it. To a certain degree, of course. Let's look at what, what I like to call an equivalent force system for beams. So what do we have? We will have this simply supported beam, alright? In order for us to solve for the reactions at A, support A and support B, we basically need to concentrate the distributed load. Right, that's what we've been doing. We changed the W into a concentrated load, let's call it F. So, this is F. My question is, why do we concentrate it here? The second question is, what is the value of F? Let's take a look at this diagram again. You see the red dot right here? This is the centroid of the rectangle formed by the load W. Okay, so the centroid is located at a distance L over 2 from A or L over 2 from B if the total length is L. Now, what is the magnitude of F? Basically, the magnitude is the area under the load diagram or in other words, the area of the rectangle which in our case will be W times L and we will call it FE, E for equivalent. The next question is, what is the location? We already know that the location is through the centroid of the rectangle formed by the load. But remember, how do we get a centroid of a shape? The centroid, according to this graph I have, is basically the summation of x times a over the summation of a. What is x and what is a? a is the area of the load diagram. So it's W times L in our case. And X is the distance from the centroid to the Y axis. In our case, in this case, in particular, it's gonna be L over two. Let's put this into the equation. X bar equals summation of X A over summation of A. So X is L over two, A is W L, and again, A is W L. The summation here will be very helpful if you're doing multiple loads. But in our case, we have a single load. So if I do the calculation or the simplification, I'll get L over 2. So indeed, the location of F is L over 2. Let's take a look at another example. So this is the example I have. The distributed load is only on the second half of the beam. So the force again is the area under the load diagram, which equals to Fe equals W times L over 2. Now, what is the location? From the graph, before I start doing the math, I already specified the location. It's 3L over 4. But we want to use our equations to get to this value. We know that the, the uh, location from ge geometry, it's 3L over 4. But can we use the, our equation that we discussed in the previous slide to get there? Let's take a look. X bar, summation of XA over summation of A. Again, x is 3L over 4 multiplied by WL over 2 over WL over 2. So we really get 3L over 4. Let's take a look at a more difficult example. Not really difficult, but we'd like to use the summation, actually. Okay, these two loads, both of them are distributed over a length of L over 4. Both of them have a magnitude of W. But the first load, which is the one on the left, is at a distance L over 8 from the y-axis. And the second load, or the cent let me say this again, the centroid of the first load is located at a distance L over 8 
from the y-axis, the centroid of the second load is located at a distance L minus L over 8. And the L over 8 is the distance between the centroid of the second load to the end of the beam. Let's try to calculate Fe, which is the equivalent force. Now we have two because we have two loads, WL over 4. WL over 4 is the area of the rectangle, a single rectangle, and because we have two identical rectangles, we just multiply by 2. If, for any case, you don't have two identical rectangles, you simply calculate the area of the first one, add it to the area of the second one. Now, we look at the equation of finding the centroid. It's going to look scary, guys, okay? But try to understand it piece by piece. L over 8, or let me say it again, X bar, which is the global centroid I'm looking for right now. Or even before, guys, before even looking at this one, okay? If you have two W's or two distributed load, which are exactly the same, and they are distributed the way we have it on the uh, beam, you should guess that the equivalent force should be at mid-span. Looking back at this equation, and the results shows L over 2. What we should assume in the beginning, or what we should have thought of in the beginning, is really translated into solid, uh, through solid mathematics to a reality, right? Let's do the equation piece by piece. L over 8 multiplied by WL over 4. So that's X multiplied by the first area, plus L minus L over 8, which is the second X, multiplied by WL over 4. The whole thing divided by the summation of the areas. Now here, the summation of the areas is WL over 4 plus WL over 4, which is 2 WL over 4, which is basically WL over 2. Simplifying, I'll get L over 2. Now let's look at, uh, I would say, challenging example. Well, this example, if you really look at it carefully, you can do it in no time. But the way I decided to do it here is do it the long way. The easy way is we can tell that this triangular load has a centroid as a piece, as one piece from A to B at the center of the, the triangle, basically, at mid-span. But I decided to do this uh, the long way, so we get a grab of the method. How to find, again, I will divide it into two triangles, and I need to find the areas of these triangles. So we have two triangles. The first triangle has L over 2 multiplied by W, or sorry, one half of W multiplied by L over 2, that's half the base times the height, and two of those triangles will give me the total area, which is WL over 2. For the centroid, it's summation of XA, over A. So what is the centroid of the first, or how can we find the local centroid of the first triangle? It's X, which is L over 3, multiplied by the area of the first triangle, which is basically WL over 4. And the second centroid is 2L over 3, multiplied by WL over 4, over the total area, will give me L over 2. Now again, WL over 4 is the area, and L over 3 is the local centroid, to L over 3 is the local centroid of the second triangle, but L over 2 is the global centroid of the shape. Now my question is, what if you have something like this? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different loading cases. So it's just more tedious work. What you need to do is calculate Fe as summation of the areas. So you go to each area and calculate it, then sum them up. Then you do the centroid, similar way. Or what if we have something like this? It's a, it's a continuously distributed load. It's not like you cannot say, oh, this is one area, second area, third area. It's a continuous load. So remember, if we can always approximate the distributed load as small segments or an accumulation of blocks of loads. But there is a more eff mathematically efficient way of doing this. In the discrete or in the, in the previous one, we had nine, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loads. So here we have infinite or infinite number of loads. 
because we can always chop this load into I can make it like two pieces three pieces four five six or a hundred or two hundred or a thousand but the more pieces I make the more accurate I will get in terms of summation of the areas and finding the centroid so instead of the summation here we basically use the integration so we integrate again the area is from 0 to L we integrate from 0 to L the entire function WX and remember integration is basically finding the area under a function for the centroid basically the area is we know that the area is the integration and then we just multiply it by X to find the uh, not the denominator, the denominator doesn't have the numerator has x in it so comparing these two equations we have this x factor we just multiply it inside the integral let's again look at exactly the same examples first we've done using the summation and try to do them using the integration so this is the example with this is the first example we did now instead of using the summation of the area we are going to integrate the function what is this function anyway w here in this case it's a constant right w is w no x's w is the same from a to b or along the x so integrating from 0 to l i'll get wx and evaluating this integral from 0 to l i'll get wl basically this is the area of the rectangle for the centroid we get this so I basically applying the equation I carry out the integration and I evaluate the integration and I simplify I get L over 2 so I'm getting the same result as before now look at the second example we did using the integration now I'm look at the integration limits the load is dis distributed from L over 2 to L so the integration goes from L over 2 to L carry out the integration, evaluate it, simplify it, we'll get WL over 2, which is exactly what we got before. Now, again, be careful with the uh, limits of integration. You, carry, you specify the integrals, you carry out the integration, you evaluate it, simplify it, and you'll get 3L over 4, exactly the same answer we got before. And we can go on with this example, but let me show you that we are getting exactly the same. Now, here we need to divide our work into two segments because the first load is between 0 and L over 4. So the first integration goes from 0 to L over 4. And the second load is from 3L over 4 to L. So the second integration goes from 3L over 4 to L. Simplifying this, we'll get WL over 2. And that's what we got before. And if I do this carefully I'll leave this guys you can pause and check my work here but if you do this very carefully very slowly you will end up getting L over 2 now somebody would ask why use integration in the first place if the summation was good enough remember we've done integration for certain cases uh, I mean if we done summation for certain cases now what if you have something like this or this or this these are all candidates for using the integration method in locating the centroid or basically in, in transferring these problems into a single leaf, uh, into a force that's pointing downwards at a certain location along the beam. Okay, let's, let's take a look at the first one. From the look of it, you can see it's symmetrical. The load, I mean, it's symmetrical, so you should expect the value of the load to be concentrated at mid span so if we this is the value of the load we integrate the wx we have the function we integrate it from 0 to l the distribution of the loads through the whole beam from 0 to l we integrate this we get 2l squared w naught over 3 and that's the magnitude of the point load or the equivalent force that we will place and if i do the integration for this one I will basically reach the point that it's going to be L over 2 and for finding the centroid basically we carry out the integration again and simplify things we get L over 2 oh, so that's what we expected now for for the second example you can tell that the load is not symmetrical 
so the load will be shifted toward the right because the centroid of the shape uh, it looks like a triangle to me very close to a triangle but the centroid will be shifted to the right to find the first we need to find the magnitude of the point load or the concentrated force that we're going to use integrate this load you have the equation integrate from 0 to L again the load is distributed from 0 to L so the integration goes on from 0 to L you do the integration you will end up having 25 L cubed over 3 so that's the magnitude the location you carry out the integration part uh, from top and bottom and simplify things is gonna be 3 L over 4 so again it's shifted toward the right support and that's what we expected now for the final example here we expect it to be shifted toward the left because the centroid of this shape looks toward the left the way I think about the centroid what if I wanted to carry this beam by just one finger where would you place this finger would you place it in the middle if I place it in the middle it's gonna rotate to the right or I mean to the left so I'm gonna shift my finger to the left a little bit so I can balance the whole beam this is the way I think about centroids so let's find out the magnitude of the load again the integration from 0 to L because I'm using this in these examples I'm using the entire beam the loading on the entire beam again 0 to L and uh, WX cosine pi X over 2 L DX I evaluate and do everything I'm gonna get 2 L W naught over pi so that's the magnitude of the concentrated force I'm gonna use where is it located carry out the centroid equation and it's going to be located at a distance which is l multiplied by pi minus 2 over pi and if you check this one given an l you will see that it's toward the left it's less than the center or less than half the length of the beam all right uh, i know this this uh, this lecture as i said before it's just a tool to help you understand why are we concentrating the load or why basically we, we know why we are concentrating the load but we need to know why are we locating the load here and why are we using the area of the load of the triangle or uh, the uh, uniform distributed load to find the magnitude now I think you have hopefully you have a better understanding of what's going on alright that should do it for this tutorial I'll hope to see you in future ones thank you